every cell in our body contains the same DNA. So how is it then that the cells that make up our heart are so different from the ones in our brain, which are so different from our skeletal muscle cells? To understand this, we need to take a closer look at our DNA. In our cells, it's all wrapped around proteins called histones. Out of necessity, to package up the two meters of DNA in every cell. Being wrapped up like this puts most genes in a default off state. From here, different sets of genes can be switched on to give rise to different cell types. But how exactly does this happen? DNA is double-stranded, and in order to switch on a gene, we need to separate those strands so we can access the DNA bases and the information they code for. This requires energy to break the bonds between the bases. And some base pairs require more energy than others. Breaking these bonds initiates a process called transcription. In other words, it switches a gene on. The protein that does this is called RNA polymerase. It uses energy to break the bonds and start transcription. It can do this on its own, if the start of the gene is the right sequence and it isn't wrapped up in histones. But if the start of the gene, known as its promoter, is wrapped up, as is the case for most genes, RNA polymerase has a problem. So it enlists the help of proteins called transcription factors. Transcription factors bind to enhancer elements in DNA and make it easier for RNA polymerase to do its work. This could be by using energy to pump the DNA away from the histone and make it more accessible, or by modifying the histone itself to loosen its grip on DNA. Whatever the method, they make it easier for RNA polymerase to break the bonds between DNA strands. There are different transcription factors to switch on different sets of genes. So now we can answer the question of what makes cells different. They have different transcription factors and therefore different genes switched on. For example, neuronal cells in the brain switch on genes that instruct production of neurotransmitter molecules to pass signals between them. But what causes an unspecified stem cell in the embryo to have a particular set of transcription factors to make it into a neuron rather than another cell type? This is a question we don't yet know the answer to, and it's at the forefront of research. If we can work out how to change a cell's environment so it produces the transcription factors needed to become a neuron, we could use this as a treatment for Parkinson's disease, which is caused by loss of neurons in the brain. This idea is known as stem cell therapy, and it holds promise for treatment of other neurological diseases too, as well as for heart disease, to replace damaged heart cells and even to generate cancer-fighting immune cells in a process termed immunotherapy. It's a really exciting area of research, made possible by our understanding of how genes are switched on.